Welcome to St. David's. Uh, we're glad to have you all here for worship. If you are visiting us, with us this morning, we're especially glad that, that you're visiting and uh, you can find everything you need to know about the service in our service bulletin. If you're worshiping with us online, you can find the service bulletin on the front page of our website, stdavids.net. Um, and we invite you to stand with us as we sing the opening hymn together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the first book of Kings. Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral houses of the Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Then the priest brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place, underneath the wings of the cherubim. And when the priest came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart, the covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, there shall never fail you a successor before me, to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O here in heaven, your dwelling place, heed and forgive. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm when a foreigner comes and prays toward this house. Then here in heaven, your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 84 together in unison. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the hopes of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find a place of springs. 
where the early rains had covered it with pools of water. They were flying from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God, Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God, and to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe. And who was the one that would betray him? And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Gospel of the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Everybody loves a good motivational speech, right? It's the hallmark of any great sports movie. You have to have that moment where the coach gives an impassioned speech to spur the team on to victory. And there are so many good examples of this, but it doesn't get much better than Will Ferrell's speech in the cinematic classic Kicking and Screaming. Uh, If you are unfamiliar with this movie, Will Ferrell is this mild-mannered guy who becomes a soccer coach for his 10-year-old son's team. Um, For any of you who have been around Little League or Pop Warner, all that kind of stuff, you know that this is, for some, the epitome of competition. You know, it's high stakes, for, for some at least. In the movie, the stress of this competition transforms him from this weak vitamin shop owner to a win-at-all-costs kind of coach. So when competing to make it to the finals, he gives the team a great pregame speech. He says, all right, Tigers, let's get ready to play. I don't want to see any laziness here. If we win this, we're in the finals. If we get a big lead, we've got to pummel these guys, pummel them at all costs, dominate and hammer them. I want you to play dirty if you have to but don't get caught. Don't be afraid to throw the elbow. If you break someone's collarbone, that's a good thing. That's what the medic's for. It's a child's soccer game. Uh, it's, it's meant to be fun, but some turn it into all-out war. It's clear that this coach missed the point altogether. Obviously, this is meant to be a caricature of, of coach motivation, but I mean, come on, who doesn't love a good pregame speech? Something to fire up the team, to get everybody in the right headspace, you know, to go to battle. For an actual real life example, you can't do better than a Lombardi speech. Vince Lombardi holds a special place in professional football, really in, in all sports, known as one of the greatest, if not the greatest coach ever. He never produced a losing season and he coached the first two winning Super Bowl teams. They even named the the Super Bowl trophy after him, so he's definitely a legend. And like any good legendary coach, he gave a mean speech. One of his go-to speeches, uh, a very famous one called, What It Takes to Be Number One, 
was given for the first time reportedly as a, as a halftime motivational speech. Lombardi said, running a football team is no different than running any other kind of organization, an army, a political party, or a business. The principles are the same. The object is to win, to beat the other guy. Maybe that sounds hard or cruel. I don't think it is. And his speech kind of comes to a close by him saying, I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, his greatest fulfillment to all he holds dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. In our lectionary readings, we've been working through not only the bread of life discourse in John, I'm sure if you've been here the past several weeks, you're tired of, of this bread discourse, but you may have also noticed that we've had several readings from Ephesians in recent weeks. Next week, we'll move on to another book in the New Testament for our second reading, but today we hear the seventh week in a row of Ephesians reading. And this one comes at the very end of the letter to the church in Ephesus. Similar to a rousing, motivational coach speech, the letter ends with encouragement to face the many challenges ahead. It aims to bolster the faithful in the city of Ephesus. So as a grand finale, it uses a metaphor in its call to action. The letter calls for the Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God. I'm sure you've heard this one before. It envisions a situation where the church in Ephesus finds themselves under assault and to give strength and protection there to take up armor. It's a pretty strong symbol. As a minority community, one that has been countercultural, one that had rejected the established religions, especially the worship of Artemis, and even a community that challenged the commerce centering around those worship practices, you can imagine that this community faces conflict from the outside. In addition to that, some might have severed family ties in choosing to follow Jesus. And so a life of faith in this time and place much different from our context, but a life of faith in this place and time might feel like a community under attack in many ways. So in response, they should take up armor. But it goes much further, actually detailing the equipment needed for this impending and ongoing battle. The equipment they need is compared to a belt, a breastplate, shoes, a shield, a helmet, And finally, one, only one offensive weapon, a sword. It sounds like a well-armored soldier. This list would not so coincidentally compare to the assigned armor of that of the Roman soldiers, something that they would be very familiar with. It's the connection, the metaphor is clear. This is how the world equips one for battle. However, the writer inverts their own metaphor. You see how others protect themselves. You see how others prepare for conflict. But for you faithful in the church of Ephesus, what things will serve you? What will equip you for conflict? Things like truth, righteousness, proclamation of peace, faith, and ultimately the word of God. These don't sound like weapons. The faithful equip themselves with things like peace and righteousness, and it's punctuated with the word, not that it should be wielded in some sort of fight, but in knowing that the message of God is punctuated by compassion and unconditional love. Clearly, the point of this writer is to contrast the attitude of the disciple against the inclination to be combative. This is how those in Ephesus will accomplish strength in the Lord, by proclaiming the gospel of peace. But even that phrase starts off our reading today, be strong in the Lord, it has a subversive element in it. It employs a passive tense. 
So more accurately, the writer is telling them, be made strong in the Lord. Be strengthened. Receive strength. Not your own, but receive strength in the Lord. And is this strength meant to defend against other people? No. In fact, it is to confront the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil, not those of flesh and blood. It's not a call to action against individuals or human opponents. This passage about the armor of God ultimately ties back to where the letter began in chapter 1. I'm sure you just have that chapter memorized, right? Near the beginning of the letter, we're told, God puts this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. The battle has been won. Christ has won the victory over sin and death far above any power or authority. And not only in this age, but but also in the age to come. The followers of Christ revel and take courage in Christ's glory. Now in just a little bit, we're going to sing a hymn. um, And you may know it. It's called Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. And I want to read the first stanza for you. You can follow along in your bulletin. Uh, It says, uh, Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Now later on it does say things like, Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Dare not trust your own. But you can see how some might overemphasize this battle imagery. And in doing so, misrepresent the gospel completely. Ultimately, the glory of Christ, the culmination of the gospels, is Jesus walking to the cross. Jesus doesn't need you to defend him. Coach Lombardi gave his most famous speech, what it takes to be number one, not only in the locker room, but he would give this speech at other speaking engagements, at business conferences, all sorts of things, Uh, and saying running a football team is no different than running any other kind of organization, an army, a political party, or a business. His message, in some way, was to take the mindset of dominating, of, of battle, of pummeling your opponent, to other aspects of life. The fierce competitiveness, and following his advice, should spill over, and one should carry this drive with them in all things until they lie exhausted on the field of battle victorious. Sadly, this text, this Ephesians passage, and others like it, have been used to the detriment of the Christian community. Some see this battle imagery as a direction, in some way to defend the faith, to be belligerent and angry with those who would question, or to be tough in response to the unbelieving, as if everyone and everything is out to get us Christians all the time. It becomes a defense for a a culture war kind of stance. We get in the way of the gospel message when acting as though the way of Christ needs defending at every turn. Instead of extreme competitiveness or battle mentality spilling over into every other aspect of life, the letter to the Ephesians suggests for us the exact opposite. Being a Christian does mean arming ourselves, but not with biting arguments or zingers or social media jabs at those who oppose us, but arming ourselves with a spirit of gentleness and putting on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Ephesians gives us a good 
pre-game speech, which maybe not the one you expected or wanted. We're told, be made strong in the Lord as you put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Amen. Standing together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, he God and not made of one being the Father, through whom all things were created. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the accordance of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection today and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For the cities of San Antonio and Terrell Hills, the nation and the world. For all the work of justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the maintenance of honor, fear, and justice, and oppression. For Blake, Max and Gray, Andrew, Frank, Brennan, Tim and Peggy, Ruth, Bill. Alice, Colleen, Betty, John, Robert, Edward and Susan, Joe and Haiti, Bayless, Dee Dee, Judy, Linda, Stephen, Nicole, Ethan, Cotty, Megan, Dana Thomas and family, Callie Loden and family, and all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all priests and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for Stephen Hall, Y. N. Strait and all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. 
O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. In God, our word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. To this day, your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Uh, I invite you to turn to your announcement insert in your bulletin. Um, so next Sunday, we're having a kind of a big Sunday. We hope that you'll all make it. It's our welcome back Sunday. Um, we're having a big celebration after the 1030 service. Um, there's going to be all sorts of stuff, a petting zoo and a dunk tank that I'm supposed to be in and a meal. And uh, we're going to have a great time as we kind of re-engage everyone and, and re-invite everyone to come back after summer of everybody being kind of on vacation and after a longer time apart uh, due to COVID. So we hope that you'll come and, uh, and bring friends. Um, I, we know that some of, you know, Delta variant is, is a concern. Um, and so next week we'll, we're going to open up all of the doors uh, to McAllister and a lot of it is gonna be set up outside um, so we'll have a, a lot of that celebration will be outside next week. Uh, so we hope that you'll, you'll make it. Um, in addition to that, we have some other things going on next week. Uh, we're going to have kids on a mission. Um, you can read about it if you want some more information about it. Um, uh, but it's just a way that our kids give back. Uh, and we kind of raise them up uh, knowing about, about service and outreach. Um, in addition to that, during the service, we're going to have our new member liturgy. If you can think back to pre-pandemic times, this was something St. David's has done. Um, it's a time during the announcements, we invite everybody who is new to the parish uh, to come forward and kind of liturgically welcome everyone, uh, welcome these new members to the parish. So if you're new, if you've been coming, we invite you to come up. Um, you, you know, you can let us know before, but... Um, anybody who's present and who wants to participate in the new member liturgy is invited to come. Um, let's see. Oh, I was going to say, that's, uh, if you come up, that's not like officially uh, like moving your letter or anything. So we can have that discussion later. But this is just a way where uh, the St. David's uh, Church can welcome you um, officially kind of uh, in, in our service. We have a lot of uh, our ministries that are going to be coming back after the summer, so um, you know, pay attention to our e-news um, and see different ways that you can be involved in the life of the church. Let's see, is there anything else I need to announce? Um, I talked a little bit about the Delta variant. I just wanted to let you all know um, that the vestry has had a discussion, and uh, we have not changed our official policy for the church. With any, with any sort of mandate, uh, but the CDC does uh, encourage you, even if you're vaccinated, uh, to wear a mask indoors. Um, and uh, it, has, it continues to be the policy that if you're not vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask. 
Um, and for communion, we are taking communion in both kinds, bread and wine. Uh, however, for the wine, we're, we are dipping in the wine. So uh, hold your bread up, and when the chalice comes by, you can dip it in the wine. If you don't want uh, to, to take part in that way with the wine, you can always uh, hold your arms over your chest, and the chalice bearer will know to go by you. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries today? I know we have one birthday. Yeah. How old did you turn? Four. It's a big one. Anniversary? Okay. Let's pray for our birthday. Okay. Let's pray for our birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Catherine. How many years? 23. Okay. Let us pray. Grant, O God, in your compassion that this couple, having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. I'm going to get the little Sadie. Do I get the little? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. 
Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord.